Hush puppies. Last week, the Pentagon released an unclassified report essentially confirming that UFOs exist and we don't know what the heck they are. These UFOs, or UAPs, have been circling around our restricted airspace for some time now, so it seems like as good a time as any to dust off Redneck Rampage. The game revolves around Leonard and Bubba, two hillbillies shooting and sawing their way through Hickston, Arkansas, to rescue their prized pig Bessie, oh, and also fight off an alien invasion. The aliens are not only big and nasty themselves, but they've cloned all of your redneck neighbors and friends from town as well, so you'll see all sorts of evil incarnations of Hillbilly Jim out to kill ya. Redneck Rampage was released in 1997, developed by Zatrix Entertainment and published by Interplay for MS-DOS. It utilizes the build first-person shooter engine, which should be instantly recognizable to fans of Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, and Shadow Warrior, and to that end, well, it's basically Duke Nukem 3D, but covered in thick, gooey redneck paint. The humor is definitely the game's selling point, although it can be a bit of a mixed bag. Certainly, there's only so many times you can hear such clever gems as... You screw with the bull, you get the horn before it may grow a little tiresome to some. And to that end, you'll be navigating through such country bumpkin locales as a drive-in movie theater, a meatpacking plant, or a dairy farm, but it does get into the spooky and macabre with places such as a mortuary, a haunted house, and an insane asylum. You'll get all sorts of random weapons, your usual pistol and the old reliable double-barrel shotgun, but then it gets into some other fun stuff like dynamite, a crossbow that shoots sticks of dynamite, alien plasma gun, a saw that shoots saw blades, and a tit gun? Okay, sure. All right, look, Redneck Rampage is far from perfect, and I mean far from perfect. The textures are ugly, the levels can be cryptic, you need to find keys just like in Doom, but the keys all look the same despite only opening specific doors, and some stuff may take forever just to figure out where you're supposed to go. Trying to throw dynamite with any level of precision is pretty much impossible, and also the game is glitchy as all heck, at least trying to run it on a modern computer anyway. But that's the thing with these old games, if you're trying to use some sort of emulator, they just don't always work right. The ambient nature sound literally stops for a few seconds when it gets to the end and then starts over again. The default control scheme is totally wonkers and unplayable, so you'll need to spend a minute reprogramming everything to something that makes more sense. The enemies and voices get pretty repetitive pretty quickly, and also your character can get drunk. Okay, so the game has a weird health refill scheme. You can refill your health by eating food that you come across, such as pork rinds or moon pies, and also you can refill your health by drinking liquor, cans of beer or cheap whiskey that you come across. Sounds easy enough, but in the corner you'll notice these little alcohol and gut gauges. Okay, so if you eat too much and your gut gets in the red, your character will fart, thus making it difficult to sneak up on enemies. That's not such a big deal, but if you drink too much alcohol, your character will get all drunk and wobbly. The screen may even get all blurry and you'll be puking all over the place and unable to defend yourself. I'm sure that was supposed to be funny and the first couple of times it happens it kinda is, but it gets pretty tedious after a while. You can lower your alcohol content by eating food or by urinating. Yeah. Or you can just go lay low somewhere and wait it out, but it decreases at a slow rate. If I sit here long, I'm gonna have one sea bear case of ass. What makes it more annoying is if you pick up alcohol, your character will just automatically consume it if you have it selected in your inventory anytime you take damage. So you could accidentally get drunk even when you don't mean to, just like in real life. It's too bad you can't also carry food that way in your inventory as well so that you could just automatically eat food anytime you take damage. If you're able to find some moonshine, this will give you super speed for a bit, and then when the effect wears off, it will reset your alcohol and gut meters, so at least that's something. But overall, yeah, definitely not a fan of this system. All of that being said though, this game has a certain stupid charm about it. Some of the levels were really neat to see. I don't know why, but I was infatuated with the drive-in level. And, I mean, the whole game is just silly and entertaining in a bad B-movie kind of way. Plus, I do have fond memories of playing this at an old friend's house back when we were in high school, so there is some misty-eyed nostalgia in there, for me at least. If you want to play Redneck Rampage, the whole collection, including the sequels, are available on Steam as well as GOG.com, and also there's a much better way to play it in the modern era. 
There's a build GDX launcher, similar to the Z Doom launcher for playing old Doom Engine games on modern PCs. The build GDX platform takes the raw Redneck Rampage game files, or whatever build engine game you want to throw at it, including Duke Nukem 3D, and polishes it up to a much more playable entity on modern computers. This still doesn't fix any of the game's issues that I mentioned before, but it at least gives you something way prettier to look at. Crank up the game's ridiculous soundtrack done by Reverend Horton Heat, Mojo Nixon, and the Beat Farmers, and just start blasting aliens all over the place. So, yeah, with all of these UFOs, sorry, UAPs flying around in the skies, it might be time to brush up on your alien defense skills with Redneck Rampage. You could do a lot worse, especially since these games are usually only like six bucks on Steam or GOG these days. As always, thank you for watching. Please don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.